Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration, where it's time to introduce you to my, to my latest spaceship. This is the second one I've built, so after, after my um, first one, which is probably still sat over here, yes there it is, this is my first one that's bringing all the supplies up from the Norvis planet itself up, in, up to the space station and loading well, everything up up there. Uh, I say everything actually. It's all it's all the, the sort of the miscellaneous things that aren't the basic raw ingredients that I'm bringing up on mass. And I've got this gradually filling up. Um, if I come over here and look in here, you can see there's a fair amount of stuff in there. There's some science packs for to replace the ones that've been uh, worked through. This and a load of heat shielding to, to probably for all of the spaceship parts I've been building. Various modules and motors and batteries and so on, and all these sort of things that I'm churning my way through as I build more and more things up in orbit. And, and so this this should, in, as, I, as I've said before, should in theory keep everything ticking over. The uh, fuel tanks have filled all the way back up again now, so we've got. Um, where are we get launch energy we've got it takes almost 400 to launch and we've got more than a thousand but i'm assuming that means more than a thousand rather than exactly 999 it looks like one of those numbers that just sort of tops out um so this would be enough for this ship to take off and fly back to the space station and um and unload all the stuff there but for now i'm going to leave it here because i'm not specifically using stuff up there at the moment because i'm down here doing different things so i think having it just sat here idling is probably is, is probably what I want to do with it and, let, and just let it fill up a bit more because at the moment this is only full to about it's about two-thirds full I'd say as an estimate um yeah about two-thirds full so there's quite a lot of space left in it still before it uh, before it take before it needs to go back up again so the new spaceship down here this one as you can see I've not put any automation stuff in it so this one is just here for me to fly around the solar system myself and use as a sort of a construction vehicle so in some of the mod packs like in the angel bobs one you have a construction train which is a train where you have it have a train where you load it up with all of the things you uh, you want and it will do the building for you you can't quite do that in vanilla but this is more like the um, the construction train I have over it all the way over here where I fill it up with all of the things I commonly use for whatever building pro projects I, I, I'm going to have and then can head out with this train and to build up an outpost of some sort. This is for the same thing but around the solar system so there's a big chest here we can stick 500 stacks of stuff in here um, and then we've got some and, and uh, then and we can fly this off to the next planet where I want to build an outpost and because of the fuel requirements of this I've, I've realized that actually taking off from Norvis takes quite a lot of fuel so here we've got um, 482 out of 443 so, so three of these tanks full of fuel is only just enough to take off from Norvis and that's 300,000 fuel which is a hell of a lot so I want to go off to another planet probably let's see I sorted the uh, oops, I sorted these before I think I decided on Salia, yes, here we go, because this one is it's the smallest of all of the oily planets, and it's a moon of Norvis, which you can't tell from this diagram, but but it is, trust me on that. And so this is going to be a good place to go out, get lots and lots of oil, and um, and build up an outpost that's just going to build rocket fuel that can be then shipped off into space for other other purposes. So looking at this planet, it's got a nice variety of stuff available on it. We've got plenty of copper and iron, uh, loads of oil, which is the whole point of coming here. Look at that, it's 14,500, 12,500 there, um, 4.5, and, and so there's, there's loads and loads of oil. And as you can see from this curve here, it's also quite a small planet. Uh, so there's not going to be an enormous amount of oil on it, but uh, an enormous amount of these patches, but it should be relatively easy to go out and just colonise to the level I need it. It's also got water, so I can have power from here, and it's got stones in case I need that. So this will be a good place to just to do all of the all of the fuel processing in one place, and I can then have a rocket blast off from here and, and carry the um, um, ca carry the fuel off to the to, to the space station. We've also got a uranium supply here, which will mean it's, it'll be nice and easy to set up a, um, a nuclear power here because I won't need to worry about shipping in the uranium from elsewhere. I can just copy and paste the uh, the systems for for uh, for refining that. So this ship should be good for that. It, beyond that, it's a fairly standard design. I've got some. I've got three turrets on the front, which will hopefully be enough to defend it against any meteorites I find. Now at the back, this is a bit more interesting. I've now upgraded to ion engines. So the other ship, this one uses rocket engines which use rocket fuel not surprisingly um, and I believe they have from what I've gathered I haven't really tested the other ones at, at speed yet um, but the other ones I believe are fast the ion engines I believe are much faster so this has a maximum speed I don't know to get take seven seconds to get to Norvis orbit anyway let's see if this one will tell me I've done a bit of redesign so it probably won't um, 
Oh, this is already up. Uh, North Orbit. No, I haven't I haven't flown it around since I last fiddled with it, so it doesn't know what the maximum speed is. But I believe they produce a bit more thrust. However, they do take an enormous quantity of energy, which is why there's this massive bank of um, solar panels in the middle of the of, in middle of the spaceship here. So I've done the maths for this, and in planetary orbit around Norvis, it takes three of these to produce enough energy to power one of these. So these take, as you can see here, they take about just over 10 megawatts each. Um, down here on the surface, they produce less than one megawatt, but up in up in orbit, when you're in space, which is where, they, where it actually matters, these things will produce about three and a half to four, I think it is. So three of these will power each of the engines. Now, that's, that's when we're in nice and close to Norvis. So as you can see, if we look... The hierarchy here. If we look at Norvis orbit, we've got 466% uh, solar panel efficiency there, and that's why I can get that three and a half megawatts out of each one of those. If we fly a bit further out into the system, if we go all the way out as far as frost, then we're only running at 111%, so it's about a quarter of the power. So I'm going to need about four times as many, um, uh, four times as many solar panels. So at that point, there w you'll need about 50, 14, 15, I think I worked out, and so that's basically all of them at that point. So only one of the engines will run. But it means the ship will still work. It'll just travel a bit more slowly than it would if it was if it was in uh, in sort of in, in Norvis orbit sort of distance. So I don't think that's too much of a problem. So I've, I've, that's why I've just whacked in all three of these um, engines and, and and not tried to, not just gone for one and assumed I'll have more than enough power for it. The other thing the ion engines require is a supply of ion stream, um, which you can put in these in these. <laughs> which, due to factorial physics, you can fill up a, a metal tank with this with this ion stream and then pipe it through these pipes into the um, into the engines. Now they use an incredibly small amount of um, of the ion stream as they move, uh, which again makes sense. That's why we use ion engines in real life because they use very very small amounts of propellant but push it out very very quickly, um, and so. I flew down from Norvis orbit with these engines, which is a, it's a very, very short distance, but as you can see, of the 25,000 ion stream in this tank, it's used approximately none. There's maybe one or two pixels over there on the, on the bar on the right-hand side that have been used up. So very, very little has been used of that, which is good. It means, it means hopefully with this, just this tank, I'll be able to fly wherever I want around the solar system. We shall see how that goes, though. I um, will hopefully not end up with this ship abandoned, um, lost somewhere in deep space because it runs out of fuel. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. So the next thing to do with that, as I said, I want to go off to Asalia and start building a, a massive fuel processing facility. So the next step on this on this process is to design up a, um, a facility that will, will produce rocket fuel at a really, really high rate and ideally at a very, very high efficiency as well. So this is going to require um, lots and lots of. Uh, we're going to, we're, let's see. We're, we're going to need lots of the um, the pump jacks to dig the, to dug, dig the oil out of the ground. Uh, we're going to need lots and lots of speed modules to go in those pump jacks as well because um, we don't want the oil patches to uh, run slow too quickly. We're going to need a lot of um, refineries to deal with that oil, turn it into ideally as much light oil as possible but we're going to then have to crack the heavy oil into light oil and turn the petroleum gas into um, solid fuel pump that into a fuel refinery and eventually through through a series of um, steps we'll turn that eventually turn that into the um, into the rocket fuel we actually need I'll then build another rocket ship probably a bit like this one but with a huge number of these tanks inside it and run the um, I may end up also running the entire thing with rocket engines as well, so it can fly a little bit more. Um, it can it can fly on the fuel it's digging up. I'm not I haven't decided yet actually. It depends on. I'll have to think about the sort of the efficiency of whether it's better to have an additional resource to worry about or to burn through a, a chunk of the um, the fuel from one of these tanks in order to get there and back. But we'll see how that goes. And that can then drop off the fuel, obviously, at the um, at the space station, where we'll be ready, and it can then be loaded onto other spaceships for whatever they need it for. Usually, getting off other planets, I guess, will be the, the big thing. So that's going to be um, interesting. Now, Asalia is much smaller, so I shouldn't require as much thrust to get off the planet. But we'll we'll work work on work that out when, um, a, a bit nearer the time. So my normal way for building up large constructions where I want to try and balance the speed throughput rather than just trying to get the basics and then balance it by adding more and more uh, is, is the way I did, uh, way I designed this, this um, uh, smelting facility and the way I designed my uh, rocket part contraption, uh, c c crafting facility. And that's to use the creative mod which allows you to um, go into, have, an, have a sort of a, a creative mode where you can play around with 
an infinite supply of everything and just have magical chests that will produce infinite quantities of whatever, or in this case, magical tanks that will produce infinite quantities of um, oil. And then I can just go through and I can I can build up a design with lots of these, uh, with lots of beacons in it, lots of basically lots of everything that's, go that's going to be needed. Um, and get it to the point where everything's balanced, everything's running flat out in order to produce the, the fuel at the rate I want to produce it at. And that's going to be a little bit of a challenge, it shouldn't, shouldn't be too bad, but the vagaries of fluid flow in this game is something that I, I don't understand as well as I would like to, should we say. So there may be a bit of messing around with that to try and get everything working properly. But we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Once that's designed, I can then summon all the bits I'll need for it using the um, using a requester chest and and then dump it. Eventually, somehow dump all of that into this chest here, and that'll happen. And then then I'll be ready to uh, this warehouse here rather. And then I'll be ready to fly off there and do the actual construction part. So that's a little bit of what I've been doing and what I'm planning for the future. The other part of it is I've been doing a, a bit more tidying up in Norvis orbit. And one of the things I one of the things I had to do where where on earth am I? Which is this? Uh, one of the things I needed to do was increase the rate I was producing all of the um, all of the ion streams, proton streams, all that sort of stuff out for the for the um, energy science over here. So this, as you may remember from the last series, uh, last episode rather, was was running reasonably well, but I got to the point where these machines weren't running quite as quickly as I wanted them to because there was an insufficient supply of all of the input uh, data cards. Now, as you can see here, I've got to the opposite extreme. Now we've got plenty of those, so these are running nice and happily. They're all, all the computers are running and they're gradually churning out the, the catalogs and filling up over here. And we've got 800, 847, 848, so that's going quite nicely. It's about a bit more than a third full, I'd, yeah, about a third full, I'd say. Uh, we just need to get all of these up to poo. Let's try and set some of these limits. <laughs> so these are all supposed to be limited to about that much. Was it three? Yes. Because that way, we, we this fills up to about a train full, and then we'll load quickly into the train, rather than just getting crazy, crazy numbers of these things in here. Um, and if you get more than the sort of the 350 in each of these, you, you end up just then using up huge quantities of resources, just filling up and filling up the station here, and that's a complete waste because we don't need that level of um, of supply of of these things. So I'd like that to stop when the station's full, and then just back up along here, so we can save the memory cards and and everything else that's used for other things. So, one of the reasons this is now working properly is because, as you can see here, this used to only come out to about here. I've massively boosted the supply of, what is this, this is making um, plasma, um, so making loads and loads of plasma, and I've put in these beacons in here as well to make it a bit more power efficient and a bit and run a lot faster as well. Um, for some reason I haven't filled these up with um, modules, that's a bit of an oversight, I should probably come back and do that. But with these beacons shining over all of this stuff, we're now producing this at uh, plus 200% speed and still at as little power as, as easy as possible per machine. So this is going much more efficiently, producing much more of the of the, pro, of the plasma stream and then the, the ion stream, uh, which is getting then used for everything else. Up here we've now got three machines producing the... Um, is this a plot? Proton stream, yes, proton stream, which is being used by all the science packs, and so we've now got we've now got enough of all of these things that every, all the machines can run flat out. The other reason I needed the uh, the ion stream here so much was because I put in a, um, a clamp here, so this means any of my spaceships can now anchor here and fill up with plasma stream. It's a slightly odd place to put it because it's nowhere near rocket fuels. So it means they have to fill up on the two different things separately. Um, but at the moment, because it's only the one manual ship that's doing it, that's using the uh, using the ion drives, this is okay for now. But at some point, I'll probably have to. I'll, I will have some sort of dedicated refueling um, system somewhere. Maybe I'll make another uh, space station for this. Perhaps perhaps a sailor orbit would be a good place to do that, and all the spaceships can go there for re for a refueling stop on their way to wherever they're going. That might be a good way to do it. I think so. I'll have I'll ha I'll ship out some stone and some chemical gel to. Uh, to a sailor orbit, and, and have a plasma generate, uh, sorry, an ion stream generation there as well. I think that's probably a good idea. Oh, and copper as well. So there's a few things it'll need, but that's not that's not unsurmountable. So the other thing that I was having some issues with here was the um, the supply of um, chemical gel, and it looks like that's still a bit of a problem because this is down to only 14%, and these tanks are a bit empty. I traced that back in the last episode over to here where it turned out these tanks weren't filling up as quickly as I would like them to. And now, 
and they are filling up. We are generating the chemical gel. You see, that's ticking up as we oh, as we watch it. It's coming up the pipe from here, and so that probably means that yes, this manufactory here is running flat out and producing. Um, how how are the ingredients for it? Yeah, the other. So there isn't there isn't a limiting factor at the moment apart from the speed the machine's running at. But looking at these. We don't have a huge amount of petroleum gas. In fact, we don't have a huge amount of any of these things. So, may so yeah, maybe I should be bringing oil up here for us. As it is, you can see we're churning through coal at a, quite a rate and just turning it into into the doing the uh, coal liquefaction. Uh, maybe let's, maybe I can put another one of these like that. I don't know if this is covered by. Um, I should have copy pasted this. I don't know if this is covered by the um, by the RoboPort network up here. I may need. Oh yes, here it is. Yes, it is. Excellent. So this may well just be placed and start working. Um, so here we, yeah, we can like that. We can start doing a bit more coal liquefaction here, and that'll that'll give me a bit more of a boost to this, so I don't run out of the um, petroleum gas. But since the last episode, I came up here and I put in an extra uh, light oil cracking facility and heavy oil cracking facility to. Um, Use the excess from these tanks and break it down into the light oil that gets turned through the petroleum gas that gets turned into the um, into the uh, orange goo here. So yeah, it's it's working, but I'm pretty sure I'm ripping through the supplies that were in these tanks, and so it's going to this is all going to get used up. So I think another one of these in here, as I've done, is probably a good idea. I may end up putting in yet another one down here, but at the moment at the moment that's not possible. I'll need to do a bit of um, extra extra pipe work, extra substrate and so on. Uh, let's see, am I covered here by RoboPorts? Not really, so I couldn't put in, a, I couldn't, can't put one more in because I've run out of range unless I, unless I put another RoboPort in, in here somewhere. But let's not worry about that, hopefully this will be enough. We'll get to the point where we've got enough um, chemical gel made that everywhere, everywhere that it's being sent to has sufficient and we can sort of stop worrying about it quite so much and the, and the production can, can catch up with demand a bit. So with that, we've now managed to get the uh, the full supply over here. We can, as you can see, we've got the, um, the tier three <laughs> tier three catalogs have have come across here, but there's not as, there's not an enormous number of them. I think these are ones I brought over manually during the last stream, um, carried them over in my inventory, and then dumped them into the chests. So that's why it's run out relatively quickly. They're now being fed along here and up here and being used to make the uh, the tier three um, the tier three energy science, which are then being pumped away down here and. Off, off down the down the belt of doom. There we go. There's, there's a few of them, uh, all the way down here, where they get put into this, into circulation on, on the sushi belt, as, as as everything else does. And it looks like at the moment, because we're not doing any research, there's plenty of them in here. So this this the input has. No, this is uh, this one. That's. Hang on a moment. This isn't right. Is it? Oh yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. So it's, the splitter here is nudging them upwards, which is why it look. The splitter here isn't configured. Oops. Um, let's. Yeah. Let's press the right buttons. Right. That's that splitter over there. I hadn't configured it. So <laughs> all of the science packs are getting passed around. Oh dear. Right. So this one here needs to send energy science pack three. To the right, and then now we should see those start to back up, back up like that. There we go. So they've now this this splitter is now full. Okay, good. Because before they were just being passed through on the other side as well, which meant they went into this chest and were passed round, and then they came down this vertical stream here to, as as excess, and a passant here. So we've got 1,700 of them. Oops, that's a bit overkill. We don't definitely don't need quite that many. <laughs> um, this is these these chests are supposed to top out at 30 uh, or about 30, like the like the, like these ones all have. Um, so that's a bit of a mistake having 1,700 in there. Um, I could come past here, grab all of those, take them up here, and put them back into the stream at the top. But to be honest, isn't, there's no point. It, it'll it'll eventually back up, and eventually we'll get through all of those all of those science packs. So I'm not too upset about that. I have noticed that the limiting factor on how quickly I can make this, apart from the fact that the catalogs are going to run out eventually, is how quickly I'm making the um, uh, holmium solenoids. So that's that's is that limited by the wires? Yes, that's being limited by how quickly I'm making 
Holmium cables and a little bit by how fast this machine runs. So I probably need to come around here and put some um, speed modules in this machine. Maybe maybe put in a second one of these instead, actually. That might be quite a good way to do it. Um, or perhaps upgrade both, both of these to manufacturers because they run at about 10 times the speed. And you can then put a lot more speed modules in them. So that would have a lot more potential. Um, I'd also need faster inputs on this side, I think, if I did that. But yeah, that could that could work. It will allow me to make sure the science is being produced at the rate I need it to be. Okay, that pretty much covers what I've been doing since the last episode. As always, thank you for watching. I hope it's been interesting. And um, yeah, this this science here is sort of is ticking over happily. Uh, then also on my to-do list is to start carrying on is to carry on make the material science three and biological science three. So there's a bit there's a bit of work to do on those two. Um, and then if, and that, after that, I can then start doing the tier fours on all of these. I'd also quite like to go off and explore, there's an asteroid belt, Kalidas asteroid belt 1, uh, here we go, because this has got lots of uranium on it, so I'd like to go out and start trying to dig that up, it's got beryllium on it as well, it's, and so on, but more importantly, I'm going to be able to start launching um, rockets from the um, sort of space um, asteroid capsule thingies that go off and do, the, that I need for the um, Astro Research 4, and so that, that requires me to have an asteroid belt um, base of some sort, so that's something I'd quite like to do. And this looks mildly interesting. So we've got some beryl here. Some more there. I'm not seeing any of the uranium, I was promised. But there's some quite nice big asteroids here. And it'd be sort of be fun to build on an asteroid. There was a post on Reddit um, a week or two ago that showed somebody who'd um, decided they were going to build all of their um, space station just on asteroids. So they're, they're, they'd, um, they'd researched the first... They'd, they'd found one large asteroid, asteroid they started building on. And, from, and they were relying on that one to start to, to um, be enough space to, to, in order to get in order to get the basic rocket science and the um, the first energy science running because those are the ones that you need in order to be able to start producing the uh, the space railways. And once they had that, they reckoned they could then um, just transport stuff around with trains quite easily and start well relatively easily and start building up their um, their space empire in the asteroid belt. But uh, I'm looking forward to see, seeing how that goes. But I'm not quite crazy enough to try that one myself. But I am looking forward to coming out here and maybe put maybe I'll put some bits and pieces on the, on these asteroids. We'll we'll see how that goes. So that's my uh, plans for the future. First plan is to get this loaded up with everything I need to make a um, an, a, a a moon base that will deal with that will uh, produce petroleum. And after that, we'll see how it goes. So there's going to be a bit more work required to get the spaceships flowing around automatically and doing all the things that they're supposed to do and not wasting fuel from it that's been made from oil on on Norvis or that's been made from coal in space because both of those are quite expensive ways to do it really I'd much rather have a, a, a single place where they're getting fuel from that's a lot more um, reliable and has has a better supply essentially so that'll be um, that'll be it for this week the, uh, for this episode uh, don't forget to come along to the streams they're now on Thursday nights because uh, due to um, the vagaries of um, of my social life um at some point next month they're probably going to move to tuesday so maybe that'll be a, a well yeah hopefully that'll be a, a suitable night for everyone who wants to come and see them we're also doing factorio industrial revolution on monday evenings so that's another good one to come along to that's me and three of my friends and we're sort of slowly battling our way through that one and there's the uh, the various various videos there's gta videos going up a couple of times a week and uh space exploration videos going up as as i have something to say so as always thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one